consider the best time for buyers to come to you and discuss their hopes and dreams and, um, and uh, questions about the process? Before they buy the property, yeah. Uh, Absolutely. Without a doubt, you need to have an accurate survey done before you buy the property and have us do a feasibility analysis. Uh, it's very rarely that I can just look at it and say, now nah, you're fine. Um, I actually did just have that happen for a local realtor, mm -hmm. uh, but um, and he was surprised. Uh, I said, no, you know, you're in, you're in the right zoning. You have the right critical area land classifications. You know, everything just kind of fell together perfectly. So it happens, but mm -hmm. I mean, is that what you really want to roll the dice? You know, if you're spending, you know, close to a million dollars on right. a waterfront piece of property. Right. And it's generally acceptable piece of the process in these situations to add a feasibility study into the contract at a time period for getting that, to right. getting that accomplished. And if you're looking to do any type of improvements to the property, you're going to need a survey anyway to get permits. Okay. You have to have, you have to submit a site plan and that has to be based on uh, an accurate survey. Any location drawing has a note on it that states do not use for permanent mm -hmm. acquisition. They all say it. Mm -hmm. uh, and you'll see that the um, positional accuracy is plus or minus two feet. Wow. So if that's what you want to try and use, that's right. it's up to you. Well, the location drawing, what I've always been told, is basically more for the lender than for the home buyer anyway. Um, so, you know, if it's something that's going to be for your use and this is, you know, a, a forever home or a long term or major investment, um, you know, it's very helpful to understand the reasons why the survey is, is a very good investment <laughs> and a great first step, necessary yep. first step. So speaking of perk testing, um, something that might be very useful for people to have an understanding of is about um, the perk testing season here in Anne Arundel County and um, when that happens and what you need to do to be ready for that. That's correct. It's called a wet season perk testing and certain sections of the county are required to test during uh, the season when the water table is at its highest. So groundwater okay. elevations are the highest because they want to design the system based on the most restrictive water elevation. Okay. Um, that season generally runs from mid-February till about April, mid-April. Um, usually doesn't bleed too much into May and it's entirely dependent upon the monitoring wells that the uh, health department has. Um, so if your lot is a wet season perp lot, you have to get it done during the wet season. Uh, if you want to design the system outside of that, uh, you'll have to wait till the next perp test season comes around. Okay, so important to know if you're planning on <laughs> updating or building on um, building on a lot that you have to uh, pay attention to when the wet perk season is and get your applications in in time. So, can you tell us about any other environmental factors that people would need to consider um, when they're going through the building process? Uh, yes, as part of the surveying, um, we identify the environmental features such as tidal and non-tidal wetlands, streams, steep slopes, hydric soils, highly erodible soils, um, and things like that that we know have buffers to them so that when our survey crews go out, we have them accurately located and can then delineate the buffers based on where those features are. Okay, so for example, if I'm on a steep slope, um, I need to know because it's gonna affect where the placement of the footprint of the house can go. Correct, and I've seen times where folks didn't investigate their whole site and there were some steep slopes in, out in the woods and um, I was talking to him and I said hey you know there's a, a floodplain in the back and they couldn't believe what I was talking about until I pointed out on our survey how the contours were very tight and mm -hmm. so there's a steep slope back there and a floodplain and they went out a few days later and actually walked the site and had no idea wow. what was going on in the rear of the property. So again, another place where all that information from the survey is really going to help you make good and clear decisions. So can you walk us through a little bit um, of the difference between trying to build or do improvements on a property that's on public utilities versus on well and septic? Yes, this is one of the things that I, I research all the time. So if you're on a public utility, uh, public water, public sewer, generally you're going to be okay um, wanting to improve your property, make your house bigger. It's when we get into well and septic mm -hmm. is where the problems start. So 
You have to have a perk test on the property so that you understand the infiltration rate of the soil to understand how well the soil is going to absorb the sewage coming out of the house. Um, so in Anne Arundel County, it, the, the septic system design is based on the livable square footage of the house. So if there's an existing septic system and it's designed for a house of 2,000 square feet, mm -hmm. but um, you know, you and it's already built out to 2,000 square feet, if you want to add on, you have to add on to that septic mm -hmm. system. Now you can't just make a septic trench longer, you have to put new trenches in. So um, you have to have this, the available space on site to make that work. So sure. it becomes uh, just a geometry exercise. Can, mm -hmm. can you make it work? Um, you know, there's varying types of septic uh, disposal areas. You have dry wells, which are deep, trenches, which are skinny and long, or you have, unfortunately, sometimes the mound systems, mm -hmm. uh, which, which people see, and, and that can really chew up a lot of your yard. Mm -hmm. So most of the time in the newer subdivisions, there is actually a 10,000 square foot septic reserve area that is okay. platted in your yard. So you need to know where that is. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to do an addition to your house or you want to do a detached garage, obviously it cannot be in that area. Or you have to replant the 10,000 square foot area. Okay. So you can put a driveway through it, you just can't put a structure in it. Um, okay. So that could limit the size of the house, it could limit the number sure. of bedrooms. Um, and wells, generally with wells, uh, the problems that we have are the setbacks. So a well has to be set back 30 feet from a structure and then it has to be 50 feet from any part of the septic system. Okay. So you can run out of space very quickly. Sure. Yeah. Um, and that's why a lot of times we'll see the well in the front yard and the septic system in the back. Yes, that's Sometimes what we like to see. Sometimes vice versa, yeah. but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we'll see a lot of the time. But that's also why a lot of time when you're looking for a lot or a home that you would renovate, um, regardless of by the water or not, one of the most important things in the valuation portion of your process is, is it on well and septic or not? Because if it's not, like you said, you will have a, a great deal easier time um, changing yes. anything about the footprint of the home or doing a building. Cool. Well, thank you so much for all thank this you. information. Super, super helpful um, for a lot of our clients. And if you pull nothing else out of this, um, go and get that survey done before you do anything else. <laughs> and it's going to help you with a lot of the other decisions that you need to make. Yep. Thank you very much. Thanks.